Today, we will teach you the basic techniques of watercolors by looking closely at the work of Johann Gustav Hoch. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Rijksmuseum's very own creative channel, Rijks Creative. This season, we will show you everything you need to know about watercolors, inks, and even blueprints. So grab your brushes and let's go. This is our teacher for today, Ingrid. Hello. Can you explain to us what a watercolor is? Well, a watercolor is a work of art made with watercolor paint, which is always transparent, and you work on a special kind of paper. Okay, let's do it. Okay. Watercolor is a water-based medium, and you can make your, the paint yourself, or you can buy. Here you can see the examples how you can make the paint yourself. You need Arabic gum and pigments. This is a pigment, this is ultramarine, which is made from the lapis lazuli, and this is sienna, which is made from Italian soil. You have to mix it all up and ground it very good, because it has to be very fine. It's easier also to, go, to buy paint, of course. You can buy paint in little pans, right, like this, or you can buy, buy the paint in tubes, like this. And tubes you have to put on a palette, of course. Tubes are very handy if you need big things, if you want to make big paintings. And these are very handy when you go to paint outside or if you want to make small things. Of course, you need a nice set of brushes. You can choose between artificial hair or real hair from an animal. This is squirrel hair. The important thing is that you need a very nice tip and that it can contain lots of water. You have lots of different kinds of paper. You can buy them loose papers. You can buy them in blocks. These are watercolor blocks and they're gummed all around the side. If you use this, you have to leave the paper on the block. Don't take them off too early. You have different kinds of blocks. You have very rough paper, you have very smooth paper or medium paper. The best one for very detailed work is the smooth paper. They're called, also called hot pressed or cold pressed. And the rough one is very handy uh, if you make big works or very expressive work. This one contains a lot of water. The loose paper you can use if you want to paint something in the middle, it's very easy, but if you want to paint something big, then it's better to put it on a board. I will show you how I'll do this. You need a board, you will need special tape, and you will need, of course, the paper. First, you have to wet the paper. I use this sponge. I'm gonna wet it from both sides. The paper now will swell a little, and that's what you need. You want the paper to become bigger. And in the meantime, you can just take this tape Now you take a little bit of water, start with the longer side, and just put it along the side. Half and half. So this is how the paper is put on a board. Of course, this is a small paper, it's easier to put it on. If you have bigger papers, you will have warps in it. It's no problem, it will be become flat when it's dry. So you have to let it dry. Don't start now, but you have to let it dry first. When you start with watercolor, it's very important that you know your materials very well. So it's a good idea to make a chart of all the colors of your paint box. So paint them one by one. Here you can see an example, I did it before. It's very nice to see all the colors you have in the paint box. You can see it's a dark one and a lighter one. That's one of the important characteristics of a watercolor. You can make a dark color, but if you add water, then it will become lighter. So, start a dark one, and if you add water, it will become lighter. Red will become pink. That's very important. So you don't have white to mix your color lighter. You have to mix the color lighter with water. If you want to paint something and there's something white in it, you will need to leave things out. For example, I'm gonna paint a, a leaf and you want the 
some lines in it white, then you have to leave the lines white. You can't put white paint over it. So that's one of the most important things of watercolor. You have to leave the white open. There is no white paint. One other thing which is important is the mixing of the colors. If you want to mix, for example, red with blue, you can mix them on your palette. Red and blue will become purple. Look, you have a very nice color of purple. But you can also mix on your paper. I have here already painted the red. If I put blue over this, then you get also the color purple. So you mix on the paper. One other thing I have to tell you is you can paint wet on wet or you can paint wet on dry. If you paint, for example, you have a piece of watercolor paint which is wet and I put another color on it, it will bloom into this wet paint. It's very nice, very nice material, very nice uh, colors you have. It's a bit um, wavy, quite loose. If you paint wet paint on dry, then you can make very sharp lines. It's quite something different. You can both use them, both very nice. Then you have very sharp lines. You can see the difference. So that's also very important. Painting wet on wet or wet on dry. And the other thing is you don't have white paint. You have to leave the white things open. So those are the, the two most important things you have to think about when you're painting with watercolor. So now we're going to start for real. If you want to make a watercolor for the first time, it's best thing to take something easy, maybe a shell or maybe some leaves. And I have a very nice example of shells. This 18th century watercolor of Jacob Hoek. It's very beautiful, very well done. So we can take one of these nice curry shelves as our inspiration for today. First, we have to make a drawing, of course. We draw just with a simple um, pencil, make a drawing very loose, but you have to take care that you really take the silhouette of the shell, that you find the silhouette. And another important thing is that you find the white spots, because the white spots you can paint. So it's very important that you know where the light is. Here you have a little light of the window. So I think, think this is our shell. If I want to start painting, I better erase my pencil lines because the paint will close it in and then you can't get the pencil lines away. So I erase the pencil line very softly so I can see it a little bit like this. And now we can start painting. I think it's a good idea to start with a very light gray overall painting and then you leave out the spots where the light is. So I take a little bit of Sienna brown and sepia, a bit paints gray, very light. You put down the color. So the first, leave out the spots where the light is, very important. And if you make a little bit of mistake, it's not a problem. You can always dab it a little bit with uh, with a tissue. Maybe this is a bit too dark. You can dab it. So it's a, this is dry. We have to wait for this that it is dry. When the first layer is dry, you can really look closely what's the next step. Maybe we're going to try to make the shape a little bit more rounder. I take some grayish color and I take care of the, the shape, put a bit more water with it, and I try to fade out the shape. Here it's dark and in the middle it's lighter. Be careful with your light spots. I think this is a nice second layer. Maybe a bit more dark here. So this has to dry also. You can see that the roundness of the shell is already seeable. It's also a good idea to add a little bit of brown in the shell. You can see the brown color. 
So I add just a little bit more brown in the center. So this little thing I just take away. There you go. So this has to dry a little bit. Now I'm going to make the spots a little bit softer because you want to make the shell very round. And it's always good to look at your contrast. This is the little light window we can see. So I'm going to intensify the contrast there. Do more color around this little window. And this is a very light color, so I'll leave this open and maybe a little bit of color over the other sides. So intensify it around this little window. Use a lot of water. Let the stains are very soft. I'll take a smaller brush. Our next step is to look at this little entrance here, what you call it, the shell. This has to be very dark. So I'll make a darker line here. And I think this also can be a bit more dark. So it's all more little details. I use a little brush to make the details. You see that I use a lot of water to smooth out the colors. So when you think you got the, the lines right, there's a bit more. I want this stain to be, this white to be very bright. Oh, if I make a mistake, no problem. Just dab it up a little. There's a bit more shadow. Maybe a bit more brown. Sometimes you have to really let it dry a little bit. I'm dark here in the corner. So now we have our, the form of the shell. Look close if you like everything. I don't like these lines. I just do them a little bit softer like this. And I will leave this to dry and then we're going to look at the spots of the shell. I just put on all the little dots. You can see it's a good idea to do this with a pencil again. And take care that the dots who go on the corner of this shell are more oval shaped. And in the middle they're more rounder. You can see that. So where it goes around the corner it's more oval shaped. So we have these little dots. And you can see it's a quite dark gray color with a bit of brown around it. I start with a dark gray. And just put on all the little dots. Very important by the when you are here with a white little window that you put in a half one. So you can really see that it's light on top of this shell. On the corners it's more oval shaped and in the middle it's more round. Some spots are darker, some spots are lighter, some touch each other. So I'm going to look a bit more closer to the little spots. There are some brown lines around it. And we really take care that you make these shadows here close to the light. Because contrast is always very important, that you have contrast in the work. And these light spots and the dark spots make a contrast. I'm going to put in a little bit more blue. Very light shade. Test always your shade on this. Test. It's too much like this. Here's a bit more bluish. Put more blue in. And around the dark spots there are some brownish lines. You can see them. So we're almost finished. I think it needs some shade from the light. You can see the shade on the ground. I take this paints grey, which is a very neutral color. I want to make the shade. A bit more 
auch schön hier. Und mit mal da hier. Ja, ich kann nicht das Spot. And let that is dry, and then I'll put in the last details. So I just put on a little more shade here, a bit on this side, maybe just a little bit more brown around the spots. It's always nice with color in it. You can see that I left the white spots. This is the white of the paper. This is the white of the paper. So I try to emphasize the roundness of the shell a little bit more. I think we have a little shell, a curry shell. This was very informative, Ingrid. Thank you. Any final tips? Well, watercolor is quite a tricky medium, so don't give up too fast. Practice a lot and it's, it's really worth it. Okay, thank you very much. See you next time. See you next time.